Today, Governor Dan McKee extended his emergency declaration for another 30 days. He's also extending several COVID-related executive orders through the middle of this month, including one requiring masks in schools. Meanwhile, case counts and hospitalizations continue to plummet. 12 News reporter Kim Kalunian spoke with the head of the Department of Health about what this means for you. Kim? Well, those plummeting numbers come as the state identifies its first two cases of the Omicron subvariant known as BA.2 or the stealth variant. Dr. Jim McDonald says there will be more, but it's not going to change the course that we're already on. Is the worst of this Omicron surge now behind us? Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I'm encouraged by the numbers. We're heading in the right direction. In our monthly conversation on 12 News Now at 4, Interim Department of Health Director Dr. Jim McDonald says state and health leaders are in talks about how to modify policies in response to changing data. Can we remove some of this mitigation? And that's something we're looking at, but it's got to be done very thoughtfully. If you follow the metrics with me, if you follow the case counts, as we get closer towards moderate transmission, means, you know, less than 50 cases per 100,000 per week, we're all going to feel a lot more comfortable. Health officials in Massachusetts said this week they believe the new subvariant of Omicron, BA.2, has arrived in the Bay State, and McDonald tells us health officials confirmed its arrival in Rhode Island on Thursday. We have two cases we just learned about this morning, so that's just two. Um, and you know what? It's not at all surprising. McDonald once again urged Rhode Islanders to get their booster, saying just 37% of the population has gotten that additional dose, a number he's worried is too low to prepare for the fall. This as the pandemic heads towards becoming endemic, like the flu or strep throat, something McDonald says we'll all have to learn to live with and plan for. In other words, what we're going to be doing, you know, is making sure all the health care providers know, look, we want you to do testing in your office with those rapid tests. Every office should do specimen collection. We expect that to happen. We expect every doctor and health care provider to know how to prescribe oral antivirals or acquire monoclonal antibodies. In other words, it's really solidifying a lot of what we've already done so people understand we got to live with this beast. And again, Governor Dan McKee is extending multiple COVID-related executive orders relating to quarantine and isolation, open meetings, and masking in schools, all of those being extended now until February 14th, at which point any further extensions would require General Assembly approval under a new law. I'm Kim Kalunian, 12 News.